Beloved community, here we are again and again as we enter into the season of Lent. Um, for those of you on Zoom, those who will be joining soon, as well as those who are on Facebook Live, peace be with you all. We have begun a 46 day liturgical season, 46 days if you include um, Holy Week, that begins with an ashen cross on our forehead with the words that we hear, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And this uh, Lent, we're reminded again and again that life like happens. Suffering and pain and disillusionment and grief and loss will most definitely be a part of our path. In Lent, we're called to walk with Jesus in a time of self-examination, of confession, of spiritual realignment. And we have to wrestle with the inevitable, that we again and again are in need of God's grace and God's guidance. We stumble again. We get lost again. We doubt again. We mess up again. We cry out for relief again. And without hesitation, God meets us in the chaos of the world and the frailty of our lives and offers these sacred and true words. I choose you. I love you. I will lead you to life. For Lent this year, our theme is again and again. It's inspired by the gorgeous collaborative work of sanctified art. Beloved of God, I invite you to just set aside the distractions in front of you at the moment. Maybe stop adding to your to-do list. Rest in God's presence. I invite you to also light a candle for your space. We will also be sharing in communion a little bit later today. God is meeting you here now. As we gather in this imperfect yet holy way, rest and receive God's presence again and again, beloved of God. We continue with the opening words. God meets us in the night, before the sun rises, before the wound heals, before there are answers, before there's closure. God meets us in the daylight where joy is effervescent, where laughter is contagious, where flowers bloom from cracks in the sidewalk and where people gather around the table. God meets us at the threshold, at the edge of the water, at the beginning of the wilderness, at the start of something new, on the edge of faith. And if God meets us in all those places, then surely God meets us in between, staying with us through the wilderness. We are not alone. God is here. We now turn to God with vulnerable honesty. Thank you, Cassandra, for leading us in a corporate confession. Again and again, God meets us where we are. God's love knows no bounds, which is hard for us to understand and easy for us to forget. God who meets us where we are. There is nowhere we can go that you are not. You are with Jesus at his baptism. You are with him in the wilderness. And even in between, you were there saying aloud, this is my beloved. We know that you are with us too, in the joy, the despair, and everything in between. But so often we act like we are alone. Instead of coming to you with our pain, we hold it in or cast it onto others. Instead of coming to you with our joy, we, we credit ourselves and offer you nothing. Forgive us for the things we have done and left undone. Again and again, we are in need of your mercy. Remind us that in every breath, in every step, you are there. You are the God who meets us where we are, before and behind, above and below, within and around. 
we continue our time of confession with the song again and again by the many. If you hear nothing else today, hear this. God is here. God sees you. God knows you. God meets you at the edge of the wilderness and wounds. And God calls you beloved. You are washed in forgiveness and grace. God's love remains. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, in the waters of the flood, you saved Noah and his family in the wilderness. You protected Jesus from sin, death, and despair. By the power of the Spirit, meet us and guide us in our Lenten journey. Meet us in our hope and in our heartache. Meet us in our fear and our joy. Meet us in our cupped hands and clenched fists. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I would like to invite Barbara to lead us in the Old Testament reading from Genesis. Barbara, Barbara you're muted. 
You'll need to unmute yourself. The Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember that my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the gospel. Now join Bobby for the children's time. Good morning, everyone. Hello to all of my kids and big kids, all children of God. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Um, do you know what today is? It's the first Sunday in Lent. And Lent is the time in the church year when we prepare to celebrate Easter. Kind of like Advent is the time that we prepare for Christmas. So Lent is 40 days long and it begins on Ash Wednesday, which was last Wednesday, but we don't count Sundays in those 40 days. So during Lent, we look at ourselves and what's important to us and we turn toward God. At any time, but especially during Lent, we focus on turning our attention to God and putting God first in our lives. One way we do this is through prayer. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I start to pray, I just can't think of anything to say. Well, today I wanna to show you how to do something that might help you when that happens. And all you need is your hands. And so I wanna invite all of you, um, all God's children to do this with me. So put your hands together in front of you like you're praying. Can everyone do that? Put your hands together. Great. Okay. Um, now, uh, keep your eyes open because you're going to want to see your hands. And notice that the finger that's closest to you is your thumb. Our thumbs are the closest fingers to our heart. And so they're going to remind us to pray for those that are closest to us, like our friends, our, our siblings, our brothers and sisters, our parents, grandparents, aunt, uncles, cousins, all of those people that are close to our heart. And the next finger, this is called our index finger. And sometimes it's also called the pointer finger because it's used for pointing. So this finger is going to remind us to pray for those that point you in the right direction. So we already prayed for our parents and grandparents. They certainly help point us in the right direction. But who do you think are some people, um, other people in our lives that do this? What do you think? Yeah. Great. Any other ideas? Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> people. Who are some people that point you in the right direction? Who teach you? Um, my teacher. Yes, absolutely. So our pointer finger um, is going to help us remember to pray for teachers and mentors and coaches. 
and pastors. So our thumb is people who are close to our heart and our pointer finger are people who point us in the right direction. So the next finger, I don't know about you, but on me, it's the tallest finger. And this finger is going to remind us to pray for those in high positions, our leaders. So we pray for our president and other leaders in our government and those who are leaders in our town and school and church. So we have people who are closest to our heart and people who point us in the right direction and people in high leadership positions. And our fourth finger is called the ring finger. Did you know that this is the weakest of all our fingers? So this finger is going to remind us to pray for those who are unnoticed. Maybe they're in trouble or pain or sick. So we have those closest to us and people who point us in the right direction and people in high leadership and those who are weak or considered weak. And then we have our smallest finger. And since we shouldn't think of ourselves as bigger or more important than other people, this finger is going to remind us to pray for ourselves. So there you have it. The next time that you're talking to God and you can't think of anything to say, let your hands guide you and your fingers remind you of who to pray for. During Lent, try this way of praying. Will you all pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for hearing us even when we don't know what to say. Thank you for knowing our hearts and being with us always. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope to see you next week. And now I'd like to invite Gwen and Rooston in our gospel acclamation. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the, with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, pro proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Thanks be to God. Beloved community, grace, mercy, and peace to you from the triune God who meets us again and again in our brokenness and leads us to life. Amen. Before before being driven into the wilderness, God 
meets Jesus in the waters of baptism with these formative words. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is claimed first, loved first. Before Jesus endures like hardship or hunger, God speaks a truth that will guide every step Jesus will take on the front lines of human suffering. You are my son, the beloved, my own, I am delighted in you. Before, like before Jesus performs a miracle or heals someone who's sick or gets into the generous habit of feeding thousands with a few loaves of fish and some, and, or a few loaves of bread and some fish. Before Jesus does anything, Jesus is loved and claimed and known. Like God meets Jesus at the waters of baptism, at the edge, the threshold of his ministry. And first, before he goes anywhere, he's loved. However, baptism does not insulate Jesus from hardship and persecution. As soon as he's baptized, he is driven into the wilderness where he is tempted by the accuser. And then after he comes through that, his very identity as God's own flesh will drive him into the wilderness of, of humanity to share the good news in the wake of human betrayal and abuse of power and neglect and selfishness and hunger and grief and violence Ugh, at every turn. The divine identity of Jesus will be questioned and his body will feel the pangs of fragility. Beloved community, did you know that God met us before we were driven into the wilderness of this pandemic? Last year, we gathered in the sanctuary, and the last time we gathered in the sanctuary for worship was March 1st, 2020, the first Sunday in Lent. So if we are following the liturgical year, this is the one year anniversary of our last worship in the sanctuary. And we heard this same story about Jesus being driven into the wilderness, but from Matthew's point of view. And so I looked back on my sermon from last year and I want to apologize if I was not fully coherent <laughs> because I had driven through a snowstorm leaving a youth retreat on Saturday night and didn't get in till 2 a.m and then had to get up early on Sunday morning to kind of readdress, readjust all of our procedures for offering and communion. And because we were the epicenter of the first outbreak of COVID-19. I mean, it's comical now, but I, I remember going to great lengths to kind of figure out how we were going to do communion differently. Um, very aware, like inside of me, like I could feel the anxiety that morning, knowing that anytime you change <laughs> anything within a faith community, it can be difficult. And so I consulted with staff and council and worship leaders, and we went through all of the new protocols that we would use small cups at the 10 a.m. service, and we would wave at each other or maybe do an elbow bump for the sharing of the peace and the offering plate would just be placed in one area at the entrance when for people to use. <laughs> a little did we know that we had so many changes that would be coming in a matter of days. Soon the pandemic would shove us, shove us into a long wilderness of unknowns. My sermon for last year described Lent in this way. Lent is an uncomfortable self-discovery, a time of being stripped bare of all creature comforts and familiarity. We're plunged into the unknown and forced to remember who we are. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize that we would actually live this out and I had no idea that Lent would be extended for us for so much longer than just 40 days. This was the prayer that was offered 
at the end of our last in-person communion together. We prayed this, compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the eight o'clock service, this was the blessing. God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness and turns to the cross, Holy Spirit who draws us draws near to us and sends us out. Bless you and bring you to life everlasting. It's haunting for me to, to hear that sentence, Holy Spirit who draws near to us and sends us out. Oh my goodness, we have been sent out, as I said, longer than 40 days, pushed to our limits again and again, needing reassurance that we are not alone. Each one of us at our own times have had like a breaking moment, a moment when we realize that we are done with this pandemic, done with restrictions, longing for life to go back to just one, some semblance of normalcy that we had enjoyed before. But beloved, hear this. Not only did God meet us before the wilderness, but God meets us during the wilderness. Did you notice in the scripture that Jesus was not alone in the wilderness, according to Mark, even though Jesus is silent and Satan is mute? In verses 12 and 13, we read this, and the spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Did you notice that it did not say that and the angels waited on Jesus after he successfully went through every trial? Once he passed the test, he was finally given encouragement and inspiration from the angels. No, Mark does not offer any conditional time stamp or expectation for Jesus. It appears that God meets Jesus before the wilderness and during the wilderness time. Though this might seem like a small insight, I think it's a radical claim about God's agency and presence. We live in a world full of conditions. You will be accepted if you conform in this way. You will be valued if you make something of yourself. You'll be beautiful if you look a certain way. You'll be healed if if you follow this prayer, not that we say that here at St. Matthew's, but it is around in our culture, we, you will be cared for by angels if you pass the test. We are socialized inside and outside of the church to believe these transactional con conditions are true and normative, but they're completely alien to the grace and the love of God. God does not love us more or less because of our social, social behavior. That's not the way God works. God will not love us once we finally complete rehab or once we finally get our life together. God will not love us once we finally fix all of our broken relationships and deal with our depression. No, God loves us before and during the wilderness of our pain. And the temptation, well, it comes when we're tempted to give up and to not trust God with, with all of that which we face with our future and our pain. I've been pondering this week, what or when does God meet us? Like when has God met me? And I found myself reliving some of the hardest times of my life, not a pleasant prayer exercise, <laughs> mm, but I thought back on the landscapes of wilderness journeys that have given me scars that have healed. 
and stories of my own failure and heartbreak. You know, the ones um, that leave us feeling lost and lonely and searching for answers. These are just some of mine that I wrote down. Like I remembered the sickness of someone that I love, my journey with depression and anxiety, the loss of a dear friendship, the death of my dad, the grief of leaving a job that I love to support David and his call, you know, accepting my limitations, naming the things I can't control. Ooh, those have been really hard wilderness seasons for me. And I'm currently in some wilderness right now. Each one of these though, each one of these times of being in the wilderness, there are glimmers of God dust. Like I can see God meeting me before and meeting me during, during the wilderness. For instance, about nine years ago, I was right in the middle of Lent, serving at a congregation in Bloomington, Minnesota, and I was having to write a sermon on Lazarus. You know, like God, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Oh, and I had nothing. I had no words. I had no, no inspiration. I sat at a blank screen with tears coming down my face. It was depleting. And when depression rises in us, like it can rob us of our own sense of worth, our own sense of agency. And I remember spiraling for a couple of days, wondering if I should even continue to be a pastor. I know, irrational, catastrophizing, but that happens. <laughs> I was caught in a loop of emotions and regret that kept me dead inside like Lazarus. And I felt like I was surrounded by wild beasts and there was not an angel in sight. But when I look back, two weeks before my depression flared, I enjoyed a wonderful conversation with a friend who told me about the Sisters of, of St. Joseph in St. Paul. These nuns who lived in community offered spiritual direction for, for anyone who might need it. And I remember thinking, well, that's nice, but I'm never gonna need to talk to a nun. <laughs> and then life happened. And I was decimated and kind of felt like I was in a fetal position most days. So I called and I set up an appointment with Sister Mary. She was well over 80 and one of the most peace-filled people I'd ever met. As I walked in, she said, I've been praying for you since you made your appointment. And then I don't remember her exact words, but I'm gonna tell you the feeling and maybe her words were this, but I can tell you the feeling I walked away with was this. It was like she said, come here, my dear. You're carrying so, so much. Come over here and rest in God. Let's be together for a while. She was like an angel, a messenger from God attending to me during my wilderness. When I left my time with her, all of the pieces of my life were not fully put together yet, but yet she had been someone who had attended to me. How has God met you in your wildernesses? Who has met you even during this pandemic? We've had to lean upon each other during these days. And we have had our own trials and it is so, I am so thankful Jesus has gone before us. This week, I was mindful of the ways in which I have been attended to by so many of you and colleagues who have offered encouragement when I was spiritually exhausted. So tired of pivoting and pivoting and pivoting as a pastor in a pandemic. Holy cow, it has not been easy. And yet I've also been really mindful that there have many people who have turned to me or turned to some of our staff who have needed prayer at different times. Even this week, I've had multiple people reach out 
with life happening more than just the pandemic, heartache and pain and fear. And so I prayed with them. And even though I couldn't call them into my office like Sister Mary, I tried to create a space because I know that God has been with them before they even called me in distress. Like God had been, has been bef with them before and God is with them during, and I am just one person in this path to offer accompaniment and care. And there will be others that will follow in the way. The story of Jesus, we find ourselves right in the midst of it. As Jesus goes before us, we can't help but notice the year we've had, the longing that we've had for us to hear. You are my daughter, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Even in the midst of a pandemic or having to do teaching, <laughs> or having to pivot and work, or to miss your family, or to have to deal with the death of a loved one and you can't gather in a way that would be fulfilling to celebrate someone's life. My goodness, the list goes on. And in the midst of these trials, we remember that God is with us. Like, that God meets Jesus before the baptism and God meets Jesus in the wilderness and God meets us in the wilderness of our lives, here and now. <laughs> Thanks be to God that we do not go this alone and there will be God dust, there will be Sister Mary's, there will be each other walking praying, caring, showing up, reminding each other that we go with Jesus and we do not go alone because God is meeting us here and now. Let us pray. Holy, most gracious God, we are all in the midst of something. And there are parts of our lives that need healing and wholeness. And at times we can feel so alone and afraid. Attend to us. Offer healing and hope and patience. Provide for us those who will attend to us and care for us. And when we are so called, give us the willingness and the heart to respond to those in need. For you, you are the one who claims us and calls us, who gathers us near and sends us out. Amen. Rustin and Gwen now share a song with us. Uh, this song is called Dust in the Wind, and I uh, actually find the lyrics a little bit sad, but it also reminds me um, that we are sharing these experiences together, and we really are not alone, and also that things, things change, and they keep changing. to the 
the ground though we refuse to see dust in the wind all they are is dust in the wind Don't hang on Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky It slips away And all your money won't another minute buy Dust in the wind All we are Dust in the wind, dust in the wind, everything is dust in the Beloved community, we take a moment. Um, we have during Zoom not been um, having an offering time just because it, it's kind of awkward and we don't have plates to pass. And But I wanted to pause and say thank you to you as a congregation. Uh, we had a wonderful annual meeting last week. Um, we thankfully have a balanced budget and we are moving forward faithfully even in this time of unknowns. Just a few highlights. We had we received over thirty nine thousand dollars that was intended for COVID relief that we were able to give away and pass through our congregation to a variety of different ministries here within the area with Sustainable Renton and Luther's Table, and Reach and so many different places. And so I'm so grateful for your generosity, the ways that you've shown up, and just this week. Like you think about how our parking lot has now been the new sanctuary. On Monday night, we fed our neighbors with sustainable rent in. On Tuesday, we had a Mardi Gras party with a drive through food and Janet did an amazing meal um, that people could come and delight and share. It was a joy. And then on Wednesday, we had a drive through ashes to go and it was sacred and beautiful and I, um, was able to, to, yeah, we were able to use Q-tips and give people the cross on their forehead. But what I noticed and saw was the sense of companionship and care and the prayers that were offered at each car. You could tell that people were in desperate need of this word and blessing and care. And so the offering your time, talent, and treasure helps us continue to be present and creative as a congregation. And I am so grateful for how we've turned our parking lot into a sanctuary and we have turned Zoom into a way that we can connect and worship God. So thank you for the ways in which you give of your time and talent and treasures. You are a gift to us as a community. Thanks be to God. We continue with our offering prayer. God of the wilderness, we give these offerings in gratitude rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and with open hands. Amen. On this first Sunday in Lent, let us pray together as a community of faith, responding to each prayer with the words of Psalm 25, in you we put our trust. Lord God, our gardener and vine grower, we are grateful for the plenteous creation you have given us. Preserve endangered species and protect vulnerable lands from floods. Encourage the work of scientists and science educators 
and help us to treasure the wonders that you create. Receive our prayers, O creative God. In you, we put our trust. Lord God, our teacher and judge, we are distressed by injustice and violence. We pray for leaders in government to strive to equal to strive for equality and concord in all times. Make your presence known, especially today, to the people of Myanmar and Sudan and Sudan. Receive our prayers, O sovereign God. In you we put our trust. Lord God, our garment maker and keeper, we are alert to the difficulties of winter time. We pray for all who are cold, for those who are homeless or refugees, and for all whom employment requires them to endure brutal weather. Surround them with a community of, of concern and care. Receive our prayers, O warm hearted God. In you we put our trust. Lord God, our healer and shepherd, we are pained by the suffering of others, especially today those in Texas who are suffering in the cold with neither power nor water. We pray for all who have contracted COVID-19, who are bowed down by trials of any kind and whose suffering is known only to you. Give health and wholeness to all who suffer and comfort those who feel desolate and alone. Receive our prayers, O benevolent God. In you, we put our trust. We lift up these spoken prayers and the unspoken prayers of our hearts, trusting in your mercy through your beloved son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we invite you to turn on your video and share in the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Peace. 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 That's peace. 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 peace, Barbara. Peace. God's peace, everybody. God's peace. Peace to you all. Peace to everybody. Peace, Barbara. Beloved community, we gather now at, at, at Christ's table as he welcomes us to come and to gather just as we are. So um, you're welcome to grab your bread or cracker, um, grape juice, wine, or water as we share in communion. Holy God, holy and ever present, again and again, you meet us with grace and truth, for you are worthy to be praised. <laughs> you formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Hebrew people and generations to come. You call us to be your children and transform us again and again as disciples through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is a new covenant of Christ's life and love shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. And so we are invited to share in the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Lord's Prayer. Please unmute yourself and pray with me. 
Our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us Give this day, day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us, Give us our sins as we as forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved community, you are invited to now share in communion. If you are at home, know that you are not alone. These words are for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to share in communion now for just a moment. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you named us and claimed us, calling us your beloved children. You know our failings and you, you know when we stray from your path. At every turn, you meet us with grace. You astound us with your saving grace. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Loving Jesus, living word, in you, the kingdom of God has come near and all that is lost is found. Help us to boldly follow wherever you lead, trusting in your promises. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Holy Spirit, the mystery in which we dwell, into our scarcity, your abundance flows. Guide us to love and serve Jesus, giving ourselves away for the sake of the world. For this word of life, we give you thanks. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Thank you everyone so much for joining us for worship today.